Greetings, everyone, and welcome to virtual worship at Christ the King on November 8th, 2020, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. For readings, lyrics, and other important information, please see the video description below. Check in on our website, our Facebook page, and your email for frequent updates on our plans moving forward. Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Christ the King on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us for our worship this morning. Um, A couple announcements before we begin. Um, Today, we will have a special worship that is done by our women of the ELCA, and they'll be doing the entire service. Our guest preacher is Pastor Jessica Miller, who is the mission developer at the Neighborhood Church over in uh, Fargo, one that we uh, are supporting and helping as much as we can to build in the Madison um, community a congregation. So we want to welcome her. Now, don't forget, next Saturday, um, beginning at 7 o'clock in the morning until uh, 11 o'clock, Our youth will be selling um, cinnamon and caramel rolls with a cup of coffee. If you want to come over in the morning and get those, we invite you to um, support them. And then on Sunday, we are having a commitment Sunday for our capital campaign, um, Reunited in Joy. And you can come um, to our parking lot um, between 11 and 1 o'clock, and you can drop off your commitment card. Um, I'll also be there to take prayers, and also if you'd like to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. And then you can go on your way. So we invite you to um, think about that and pray about that, and hopefully um, we'll actually be able to see you next week. That said, let us begin this special worship. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
God of justice and love, you illume our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson for today comes from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the mel melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. The second lesson for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, starting at verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. It's Thank Offering Sunday. And on this Thank Offering Sunday, I want to ask each of you to think of a favorite gift that you have received. I want you to imagine it. It could be something you've received, you know, uh, in the recent past or something you received a long time ago. Whatever it is, whatever that favorite gift is, I want you to imagine holding it. You got it? Thought of something? And as you're holding it, I want you to remember how this gift looked. I want you to remember the texture and the shape and the color of this gift. I want you to remember where you were and who was with you. Can you remember how you felt receiving this gift? There's something about receiving gifts. I remember a gift that I received the Christmas of my second grade year. I had made a Christmas wish list and I had seen a particular thing down at the store in town and I put it at the top of my list and I thought there's no way I am going to get this gift. No way. It's too big. It costs too much. It's not going to happen. But I was hoping. And I went to bed and I woke up early that Christmas morning and I ran into the living room and it was there. This big, beautiful bike. And it seemed like in my memory, this bike was bigger than I was, but I remember it. I remember these shiny blue fenders that covered the tires and big wide handlebars and a big, soft, cushy, tan seat that I thought was going to be great for riding up and down our gravel roads. 
I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. I never thought in a million years I would actually get this bike, but then I did. And I rode that bike all the time. I rode it up and down our gravel road. I got to ride at friends' houses. And as I got older, I got to ride it to town for a young country girl. That gift changed things for me. And that memory and that feeling that has stayed with me through all these years. When I think about what it means to receive a gift, a gift that's so special, a gift that was chosen just for me, and a gift that was changing in my life. As someone who's trying to follow in the way of Jesus, I've been wondering even more, especially as I was invited to think about this Thank Offering Sunday. What does it mean for us to receive gifts in our lives and then give thanks in a way that's meaningful? And for you at Christ the King, maybe we ask, right, how do we receive gifts and how do we give thanks in ways that help us to know Christ and help make Christ known? Now, the story from our gospel today in Matthew, it's kind of a hard one. We have these 10 women, 10 women who have the gift of these lamps. Some seem to have more oil and some have less. Kind of try to negotiate that a little bit and it doesn't quite work out very well. And so some are at the party and some are not. There's a whole lot of things within this story. And for today, For this Thank Offering Sunday, we're going to look at this parable, particularly for the wisdom that it can offer us about what it might mean to give thanks with the gifts we have been given. So I want you to imagine another gift now. I want you to imagine that the God of the universe, God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, the God of all things, has created for the world a -a one-of-a-kind gift. God knew that there was something that the world needed. God knew there was something at the top of somebody's wish list, and God shaped and formed and created this gift in just the right particular way. And I want you to imagine that God has now wrapped this gift and placed it right in your hands. And as you're holding this gift right in your hands in front of you, I want you to look right at this gift and I want you to look at it and see clearly that the gift that you are holding is you. It's you. God created one of a kind you and placed you here as one of God's gifts to the world. You are one of God's lamps. You know, Jesus, before this story that we read this morning a little bit earlier in Matthew, after he spent quite a bit of time teaching his disciples, he told them, this important, this important reminder, this important message about who they are. He said, you are the light of the world. You. I can imagine Jesus looking right at his friends and saying, you are the light of the world. You've been given God's light to shine. And now Jesus said that to his followers. And now you are Jesus' followers, and you have been given God's light to shine brightly in this world in exactly the way God created you. You know, the women of your congregation, they invited me to speak today. Thank you very much. And I believe that God has given the women of the ELCA a light to shine brightly because they are trying to find ways to empower women to shine 
in our church and in our world. A big part of my call story is that the women of my church somehow looked at me and they saw the gift God had created in me and they gave me chances to let God's light shine. As a child, they invited me to serve. As a teenager, they asked me to help with vacation Bible school and share the gift of music. As a young adult, the women of the ELCA, they gave me the gift of attending. They have these big gatherings every three years, and they sent me to one of these gatherings where I saw women from around the world living out their faith, sharing their gifts with the world. And I saw how they lived out their gift of mobilizing women to act boldly on their faith. And that gift changed me. They gave me this gift and I sure gave thanks and it changed me because their gift mobilized me to say yes to how God had created me and placed me in this world to love and to serve. It's been a wild journey. And now here I am, a newly ordained pastor in our ELCA church, and I'm helping to serve alongside God in creating a new church, creating a new way of being and doing church through the neighborhood church right here in our Fargo-Moorhead area and it's exciting, and it's wild, and it's uncertain, and it's all this gift that God has created and placed in our hands. One of the ways God has gifted us here is with the opportunity to share food through these pop-up food pantries we've been able to have the last few months, and a big mobile truck drives in with thousands of pounds of food on pallets and sets them down and we divvy these all up into boxes and bundles and bags and we simply share it. We receive these gifts of God's abundance and we give thanks and we just share it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's not just about um, just being grateful like saying, thanks, thanks God for this food. Awesome. It's like, thank you for giving us um, these gifts that we have received. And now we get to share them. And when we share them, we're seeing all the ways God has gifted all of us together in community. We're sharing life with one another as neighbors in ways where now people's lights are radiating, radiating God's love and grace for all of us in ways that are changing things. And in the midst of this year, right, in the midst of this year with pandemic and politics and social unrest, in whatever ways, jobs or checking accounts, health, has been impacted. I think the truth for a lot of people is we're not sure how much oil we have left in our lamps. Maybe we started doubting the ways God has created us or the ways God has given us lights to shine. When we're running on fumes, how do we possibly see the gifts that are present and give thanks. When I have big questions like that, I try to look to Jesus. So I wonder if we could give thanks in the same way that Jesus did. Because in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took a simple, meager gift of bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to everyone to eat. Right? Like, it was such a despairing time. Could have been such a despairing time of his life. He took what he had, his bread and his own self, and he gave thanks and he shared it. 
and that changed the world. Those gifts, those gifts are the big gifts we get to all give thanks for. This gift that God has given us, God's own self in Jesus, where God invites us, God invites us all to the table. And we come with outstretched hands and God again and again and again, week after week, places in our hands the gifts of God's grace. And he says, this is my body and it's given for you. It's given. It's a gift. This gift is for you to feed you and nourish you and change you and transform you with my gifts of grace and love and mercy. Because then through us, God changes and transforms the world. What a wild and beautiful gift that is. So on this Thank Offering Sunday, on this Thank Offering Sunday, as we think about all the gifts in our life, some shiny, some not so shiny, some expected, some not. So you think of whatever those gifts are that you can see in your life. May you know this gift. May the gift of God's grace continue to be placed in your hands in ways that surprise you and excite you, in ways that feed you and nourish you, in ways that change you and transform you in all the ways that you need so that you can give thanks. And then through you, God's light can change and transform the world. May God's grace and peace be with you always, friends. Amen. Rise
Good morning or good afternoon, depending on if we're at uh, Sunday service or Wednesday service with this video. I'm here today with Mr. Chuck Struckman, who is a member at Christ the King, um, who I've gotten to know over the years since uh, Ginger and I have moved back to Moorhead. Uh, my name's Mark Hendrickson, by the way, and Chuck and I are just going to talk a little bit about um, Christ the King and what it means to him. So Chuck, how long have you been a member at Christ the King? 31 years. Okay. And your wife as well? I right, think. right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in those 31 years, what have you grown to like about Christ the King? The people. Okay. Uh, I like the services. Uh, I, I just love Christ the King in general. It just feels so comfortable to go there every Sunday yet. Uh, can I give you a little insight? I was not a churchgoer, Mark, uh, for many, many years. Uh, we moved from Bloomington, Minnesota to Aberdeen, South Dakota, and I did finally start going to church there a little bit, but when we came here, things changed. And, and what do you think caused that change with Christ the King? <clears throat> the people, the pastor, uh, people so friendly when we first we looked at two or three churches uh, and a couple of them we walked in and people would not recognize you uh, some of the sermons I didn't care for with the pastors uh, <clears throat> and we went into Christ the King one Sunday Eileen said let's let's try that once you know and we didn't know anybody there and when we walked in the door uh, at the first service, we were greeted. Herm Holland come up and looked at me and said, who are you? <laughs> and we told him, he said, you play golf? I said, yeah. He said, good. I'll give you a call. Give me your number. And then Pastor Olson came over and visited us at the house. And uh, we just, that was it. I mean, we made up our mind right then. So That's awesome. What, uh, what kind of involvement do you and Eileen have with Christ the King? Well, we uh, janitors for Jesus. Eileen is a member of Welka. Uh, she has uh, goes to we go to Bible studies when they when they have them. Uh, men's breakfast. Enjoy janitors for Jesus. Love that. Love the. I said I say it the camaraderie. We work hard, but we get it done, and then we you know, can get those free goodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I help with cleanup. Uh, we were involved when, uh, when we were putting on a new edition. Uh, I worked uh, many weeks, eight and nine hours a day, because I was retired, and Dennis Arndt and a bunch of us were just, you know, tearing ceilings down, doing everything, painting. Eileen helped paint. We clean carpet. In fact, I'll tell you a story about the carpet. Uh, Eldon Woolman and about four or five of us were trying to tear up the carpet going down the hallway by the pastor's office. And we were having a heck of a time. And I said, uh, anybody got a garden tractor? And Eldon says, yeah, I got one. I said, why don't you go get it? Let's pull the carpet up with that. Well, as we went by Pastor Kathy's office, I thought she was going to have a heart attack because we were pulling carpet with that with that <laughs> lawnmower. <laughs> so anyway, that you know, just I guess we volunteer for a lot of things that have to be done. You know, I mean, not just we know it has to be done. So you know, we got a lot of time and stuff. So I know um, Ginger and I obviously have had coffee with you and Eileen at the house here and, and um, you know, brought you goodies once in a while and you've become um, friends of ours. In fact, um, you and Eileen are an inspiration to Ginger and I on, on, on how life should be led through Christ, um, including um, marriage. You, you guys have been married for many, many years mm -hmm. and, and, and we aspire to, to live a life like that. So we appreciate that. And um, I consider that you know, as I was in leadership at Christ the King as, as part of a family, and, and Christ the King is a family. And um, one of the things you mentioned when we were having coffee that, that stuck with me and almost brought a tear to my eyes, um, 
you'd mentioned that um, one of the things that keeps us in Moorhead is Christ the King. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Um, and that says a lot about the church and and the the members of the church and um, and it's and it's an inviting church. It's, it's um, you know all are welcome at Christ the yeah. King. Yeah. Well, you know, Mark, our life revolves around our family, of course, but probably more so. And I'm going to say this: uh, Christ the King and our friends and our church. That's our church. And. Uh, I never ever look forward to getting up in the morning and going to church. Never ever, until I join Christ the King. I'll be honest with you. Uh -huh. I look forward to it. That's our family. We have friends there. We play cards with people from the church. We go to suppers with them, and you know, I mean, that's our life basically. I'll tell you that. Other than our children. And there's a lot to be said about about what Christ King embodies and, and, and it's leading a life of faith. And, and like I said, you, you, you and I, Lena, have been members for many, many years mm -hmm. there. And, um, and you're, you're pillars in the church that, that younger generations like myself and Ginger look up to. And, and we appreciate that leadership you bring to the church. Um, and part of why we're having this discussion today is about Reunited in Joy and, and a campaign to, to um, raise money to keep the church doors open. Yes. Well, it's, it's, it's families like yours and couples like you and Eileen that, that um, inspire me to want to wanna help contribute and hopefully others to help contribute because um, there, there, there is no stereotypes, if you will. It's, it's, everyone seems to get along and, and um, yes. As I said, you know, when I was in my leadership role at Christ the King, when we came back, I, I consider Christ the King um, just one big family. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is. Uh, you know, in talking about, you know, giving to the church and stuff, Eileen and I had a conversation the other day, and we, we discussed this thoroughly with the, what we're going to do and what we do do to the church or for the church. And I said, you know, Eileen, I said, we don't want for anything. We got whatever we, you know, we're so content and happy. A lot of it has to do with Christ the King. Uh, and I said, we're going to do this again. We're going to give this much again because she handles the finances. She, if you ask me what we got in the bank, I couldn't tell you. And I don't care. That's her, you know. And. We've never ever had problems with giving to the church. In fact, I kind of push her a little bit harder than maybe I should sometimes, but I look at it this way, Mark. Like I said, we've got everything. We don't, we don't want for anything. And giving to the church, I feel, helps other people. Amen. And I love to help other people. I don't care. It, you know. I grew up very poor. I grew up in a dirt shack, and I watched my dad and mother struggle, and I watched my dad make it very much. Back in the 50s, my dad was making $60,000 and $80,000 a year. A lot of money. Never gave a nickel to the church. And that, and I was not a church goer. I didn't get to go to church. I didn't go to Sunday school until I got married. My wife was the one that said we're going to church and thank God for it. And we, we just ask that uh, everyone consider prayerfully giving to Christ the King and Chuck I appreciate your 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 honesty honesty and candidness today as we have this discussion and I look forward to once COVID's done mm -hmm. the church reopening and a lot of energy excitement and emotion, oh, the three E's as we move forward in our um, faith in our lives. Thank you. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of intercession. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Companion, counsel those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
thank you for joining us for worship today. We want to thank our special guest preacher, Jessica Miller, Pastor Jessica Miller, and all the women of the ELCA for doing today's service. But now, once again, let me send you out with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks for joining us for worship. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.